Hello and welcome back to the newest episode of the Thinking Jew podcast, where we dive deep into Torah and Jewish philosophy, always uncovering new layers of depth we did not realize existed. I'm your host, Rabbi Moshe Siegel from Richardson, Texas. And as always, if you have any questions, comments, or feedback, you can reach me at the Thinking Jew podcast at gmail.com. One of the most bothersome and difficult stories in the entire Torah take place in this week's Torah portion, the famous story of the golden calf. A mere 40 days earlier, the Jews stood by Mount Sinai and heard the divine voice of God speak to them. Like we discussed on this Parsha podcast a few weeks ago, they had this complete sensory experience, fully feeling God in every fiber and every inch of their bodies and their being. And then a mere 40 days later, they completely disregard that entire relationship, the entire commitment that they made, which they felt so deeply. It's almost impossible to understand exactly how this evolved? How did this happen? So there's a tremendous amount of discussion on this topic in the different commentaries. And just as a, as a disclaimer, I'm not attempting to provide a full overview of all of the various opinions and possibilities. I'm going to share with you a perspective that resonates with me, that I find to fit well in the verses, and that I think can really teach us a powerful lesson for ourselves today. If you look at the beginning of the story, we're in Exodus chapter 32, verse 1. The introductory verse to the entire episode, we can see the Jews' initial intent being expressed. And the verse says as follows, The people saw that Moses had delayed in descending the mountain, and the people gathered around Aaron and said to him, Rise up, make for us gods that will go before us. For this man Moses, who brought us up from the land of Egypt, we do not know what became of him. So just a two-second history to explain where they were coming from. Moses tells the Jews he's going up to Mount Sinai, for 40 days. So they knew after 40 days, Moses is going to come down. Now the error was that Moses intended, I'm going to go up to the mountain for 40 complete days. Meaning the first day when he went up in the middle of the day wasn't part of the counting of 40. Now they didn't realize this, so they counted that as day number one, resulting in their 40 day counting actually ended on the true day number 39. And then obviously Moses was nowhere to be found. So that's the basic background to the request of Aaron. But either way, their intent in the verse is clear. They gathered around Aaron claiming that Moses, our leader, our guide, he isn't around anymore. So we need someone to replace him. It seems clear in the verses they weren't trying to replace God. They were trying to replace Moses. Nachmanides brings an additional proof to this from the fact that when Moses returns afterwards, nobody cares about the golden calf anymore. No one steps up to protect it. If it was their God, you'd assume more of a resistance, but if it was just there to replace Moses, so once Moses returns, it's completely pointless. Another proof that they were never really trying to replace God with this golden calf, rather it was a replacement of Moses. So let's put ourselves in the Jews of that generation's shoes for a minute. We know God exists. He literally just gave us the most spiritual experience in world history a mere 40 days earlier. He told us Moses would return by now, and Moses isn't here. So what does God want from us? Seemingly, I would think, if we have this close interaction with God, let's just wait, and I'm sure God will contact us. He's got his prophets, he's got Aaron, he's got some other people. You know, God, whenever you want to tell us what to do next, contact us and update us on how you want to take things forward from here. That's maybe how we would think. But that generation was on a much higher spiritual level than we are. And since they knew God had the ability to connect to them, and God wasn't telling them anything, they figured it must be that God wants them to do something. God's waiting for some action by the Jewish people. So the Jews step up and create this intermediary to connect back to God. So the next question is obvious. Didn't they know it was idolatrous? They know about the commandment of I am Hashem, your God, you should have no other gods. The whole concept of Avodah Zarah. How did they not realize that? So the answer is, they justified it by saying that Idolatry refers to people who are running away from God. But we want this being to exist as a means of connecting us closer to God. Like we said earlier, as an intermediary, as a replacement for Moses. So if we stop here, we've almost completely justified the entire episode of the Golden Calf. It becomes so understandable, so logical. What was actually so bad about it? Clearly, despite all of the rationalizations, the golden calf is considered one of the gravest sins ever committed. 
So what was really so wrong? So Rav Hirsch has a beautiful explanation on what exactly was wrong. He says, making a graven image is prohibited by the Torah. God explicitly said not to do it. It was one of the Ten Commandments they had just heard at Mount Sinai. The great sin that they did was rather than conform themselves to the will of God and say, we know we can't create an idol. God just told us that. We have to just sit here and have patience and wait for God to guide us. They took God into their own hands and said, if God doesn't come to us, we'll bring God here. This explains of Hirsch is actually a form of idolatry in and of itself. Are we accepting the word of God and using that to define our thoughts and our reasoning? Or do we use our power of reasoning to define what God says? God says, don't make any idols. The Jews say, well, we need to find God and we don't know how to interact with God. We can only get there through idols. So it must be that God wants us to make an idol. But God told you, don't make an idol. The moment we move the law from God's domain into our own domain, that explains of Hirsch is the sin of the golden calf. God gave the Jews his set of values and morals through the Torah. When is murder justified? What about abortion? What about pulling the plug on somebody who's terminally ill? When is competition in business okay? When is it not okay? When is one obligated to help someone even at his own expense? When is he not? All of these competing morals and values, God gave us the Torah to guide us and teach us the ethical, morally right thing to do. When we recognize the values and morals as belonging to God, and our role is to best understand them and implement them, then we're going to be living a godly life. But when we start justifying, altering these values using our own logic, claiming that it'll lead us to where God wants us to get, then we enter into the realm of the golden calf. Then we end up saying, it's not my job to listen to God, but rather I will determine what God wants of me. Think about it for a minute. What's the real difference between the golden calf and the golden cherubs that were on top of the ark in the Holy of Holies? The holiest place in the world was the innermost chamber of the temple, the Holy of Holies, in which rested the ark. The ark had inside of it the tablets, and on top of this ark were two golden baby-faced angels, which is shocking. Well, how could that be? Inside of the most holiest place, you have almost, it seems almost like two idols, two forms. How could that be? What's the difference between that and the golden calf? It's a very important question. And there's a lot more layers of depth to this. But the most basic answer is, is that God told the Jews to connect to him through building an ark with cherubs on top. Whereby the golden calf, the Jews told God, we're going to connect to you through the golden calf. So as of Hirsch explains, do we live our lives on God's terms or do we force our terms on God? And one last point that Rav Hirsch adds to this, a beautiful idea, is that they made a mistake to believe that they needed Moshe as their intermediary to God. And what they didn't recognize was that actually the Torah itself, now that they had this set of laws, the Torah itself is their system of connecting to God. By following the word of God, and keeping the commandments and not making these idols and doing just what God wants, that will allow you to connect to God in the greatest way possible. Give us all a blessing that we should appreciate the amazing opportunity we have in learning Torah and understanding God's commandments and having access to his morality and his value system. We should take advantage of it to make ourselves into the greatest people that we can become. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Thinking Jew podcast. As always, feel free to reach out with any questions, comments, future topic requests. You can always reach me at the Thinking Jew podcast at gmail.com.